Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of How They Do That. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, on this week's show, we have an awesome photographer. His name is Scott Witter. He is a Los Angeles-based advertising and editorial photographer, and he's assisted all kinds of other photographers, including Mark Seliger and Andy Leibowitz, Chris Buck, and Martin Scholler. And one of the things that I love about his work is he's got this personal project. It's called Dog People. And if you know anything about me, you know I love dogs. So I just love having Scott on the show today. So welcome to the show, Scott. Hi, Mark. Thanks so much for having me. Well, you bet. Well, let's start by talking about some of the, uh, the photos that you take as an advertising and editorial photographer. Um, I notice a few themes in your photography, and uh, those are that you shoot on location a lot, and specifically locations that have broken down buildings and by sort of empty lots and by railroad tracks and sort of dingy places, and you make it work really well. Is there a reason why you're shooting in those kind of environments? Well, I think one of the reasons is I've always been attracted to textures and um, coming from a background in graphic design. I started off going to uh, graphic design school uh, for commercial art before I got into photography. And so I've always been attra attracted to uh, shapes and, and graphics. So with the buildings and the outdoor locations, it's easy for me to frame up uh, the corners of buildings and give some depth and uh, put the subject somewhere along the line to the left or the right and it's actually just more fun. I mean I actually do do studio stuff but I like being outdoors in the environment and for some reason I'm just attracted to those those textures. I mean I like to make uh, clean lines out of kind of uh, worn out buildings and and places like that that, that seem dilapidated uh, stuff and I think it's just really interesting. Um, so that's probably why I do it. And I, I like to be able to uh, be outdoors because I like, you know, being see, seeing what the sun does. Because I like to shoot in the daytime and I like to shoot in the morning and at night. So it just gives you so much variety. Well, one of the other things I've noticed as far as the uh, themes of your photography, there are a lot of people with tattoos. Is that accidental or is that something that you planned? Uh, the tattoos, I think it was um, a little accidental. Um, I'm originally from North Carolina and there's definitely people with tattoos that live in North Carolina, but when we moved here and especially when we first came to California um, a few years back, uh, we moved to Long Beach and we just met a lot of people with tattoos. Um, I, have ta I have a tattoo, but you know, uh, I think that's just, it was more accidental. Um, I do, I am drawn to some of the, uh, the texture and stuff that, that it may bring um, to a photograph, but I think, I think it's more accidental and less intentional. Another thing I've noticed in your photos is that you've got great styling and specifically the props that people are using. So you have a shot of uh, this woman that has an, an accordion. Is that something that she had or that was your idea? Also the girl with the crazy sort of spirally guitar, the balloons. So how does that stuff come about? Are you doing that or is there some uh, creative director that's helping with those things? For the, for the projects, I'm, I'm actually doing all of that. Um, my wife is a very talented art director, so we'll um, come up with ideas. But yes, that's all usually, usually me and us, us talking about it. It's all, I always want to add a little something to the photograph. It's just, um, I know that other people may have photographs with people you know, just standing there. And it, just for me, I need a little more content. I want to tell a story, but not be too literal. So when I do my uh, portfolio work, I'll find people and, then, and then, then come up with ideas. And you know, that could take a week or two. I mean, sometimes I spend uh, too much time uh, overthinking it. So the, the accordion, um, and a lot of times, I, you know, any, any advice I could give other photographers is to, you know, a lot of times I will come up with ideas of just things that I see. I mean, just things that I observe. So I'm always observing. I'm always observing people around me, uh, people that are walking, people you know, in the mall or driving by in cars. And, and I'll see someone drive by with a car and, and that accordion shot. Who knows where I came I'm a big music fan, so maybe I saw a video or, or maybe I saw an old movie and someone was playing an accordion. I thought it was really cool. And for that shot, uh, a neighbor of mine was a musician that happened to have an accordion. 
And so I, I wanted to give it more of a, um, a bohemian sort of gypsy feel to it, but still a little modern. So when I talked to the model, um, I kind of told her, you know, hey, do you have anything like this? Do you have anything floral? Do you have anything that's like vintage? So a lot of that stuff is very pre-planned and worked out one to two weeks ahead of, ahead of time. Well, speaking of details, there is a, a shot that I really like. It's of this guy, he's in sort of a, a dingy room with some pipes. And in the background, there looks to be a photograph of something from like the 1920s or 30s. It's of a woman. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that photo in the background? Is that intentional or was it there? Uh, why is that in this picture? Uh, yes, that's very intentional. Um, and again, it's, it goes back to what I was saying before that when I'm, when I'm coming up with a shoot, I'll, I'll, I'll spend time, you know, just thinking about it, looking on the computer, but a lot of times I'll go out in the stores, I'll go out in the record stores, I'll go out in the bookstores. And in this case, we actually found uh, this photo in an, in an old uh, bookstore. And I'd originally had uh, another couple of photos that were like 1960s uh, pictures of like little kids, and it just seemed really odd. So we actually tried that, but we had just found the photo in like a, in an odd bin. And it really didn't have a connection. I just thought that, you know, there could be something there. And this is going to uh, give the viewer something to think about and, and say, why is that there? Who is this person? Is he, is he in jail or is he in prison? Is it, you know, or is he a rock star and that's his, and that's his mom or, you know. So uh, there's, there's, that's what happened. You know, I find these little things and just, and just throw them in and, and see how they look to again, try and tell a story that's not too literal. Yeah, and I love the, the way that you light your photos. It looks like you're using some small modifiers or just uh, speed lights, very, very small lights. Um, can you talk about what you're using on location, what kind of equipment and how you light things? Do you have an assistant? Just walk us through what a normal location shoot is for you. Okay, great. Um, usually, I, 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 I carry a lot with me, but um, I may end up only using one light. I may end up using five lights. It always depends on the situation. Uh, I do like to use an assistant, uh, two or three as much as possible, but a lot of times when I'm doing the portfolio shots or, or things for promo, I may end up just having to do things on my own. Um, I assisted for a pretty long time, so I'm used to having so much uh, hands-on experience and doing things for myself. So, um, so I'll, I'll usually bring a lot of gear. Uh, I like to do you shoot with the uh, Canon Mark II, uh, five, the 5D and I use a lot of the Canon lenses. Um, I'm a big fan of Prime. Uh, I have a 50 uh, 1.2 that I use a lot but I also have the 16 to 35 and I have the 24 to 70 and I like to use both of those zooms. Um, I never know when, I, when I'm setting up a subject um, what, depending on what the story I'm telling so I like to, to have that uh, flexibility um, with the zoom that the zoom lens can give. So uh, other things I bring, um, I use uh, some of the stuff from uh, the Paul Buff series and I also use uh, Profoto, uh, Ellen Chrome uh, light modifiers. And again, like I said, it really depends on what I'm trying to say, the time of the day. Uh, I usually plan all that out beforehand. So I use anything from small grids. I could use three or four grids on a late afternoon shoot to a beauty dish. Um, I used a ring light some, but I'll use that more for fill. Um, and I also use some of the big octobanks. Uh, so it all always depends, but I like, to, I like to play around. I like to experiment, but the good thing is to uh, be able to learn to experiment on the, on the shoots before the actual assignment. So uh, I use an array of things, and I also will end up using um, you know, if I need to uh, put up a big 20 by to block out the sun and put, you know, uh, an Ellen Chrome light under that. So um, I use a lot of different light modifiers, but uh, it's mainly strobe. Um, I will use natural light sometimes, especially if it's in indoors and I have, you know, a big, a big window bank or something. Uh, I like doing that. But the strobes usually help me to um, focus in on the subject and bring your attention to that person without, um, since I am shooting on location, if I do have a lot of buildings and I'm shooting, uh, let's say in the middle of the day and I'm at like F22, 
and everything's sharp, I want to have a light that's going to focus in on the subject or piece of the wall that's going to help uh, highlight uh, what I want the viewer to see. Well, that's awesome. Let's talk a little bit about your personal project called Dog People. Um, give us an in uh, introduction to what that is and after we know what it is, then let's talk a little bit about how personal projects can help your advertising and editorial work. Okay, uh, the Dog People Project came about uh, earlier this summer. I was, uh, I, for the last couple of years, I've been working hard at building my portfolio. Um, I kind of did a sort of a retake and went back and evaluated all my work and said, you know, I just really need to narrow down this vision with lighting, subjects, and so for two years I worked really hard on piecing together a portfolio and after, after last spring I just said you know I just sort of need a break from these individual pieces and concentrating I want just so, something to work on as a whole that's fun and my wife and I we live in don, downtown Los Angeles and we just moved here a few months ago and we have a couple of dogs and we saw a lot of the dogs and their owners at the dog parks and we're like, wow, this would be a great subject. Um, because even in downtown, you, you don't think of a lot of people having dogs because, it, well, you know, frankly, there's really not many places to use the bathroom. There's just sidewalks. There's not a lot of green grass, but there is some parks. And they, we found this kind of like subculture of dog people that were, were like us, and it's been great. So I was like, why don't we focus on some of those people and make it a personal project? And, and that's how it started, and it was a, a really joy to do that. It was, it was a lot of fun. And when you're shooting your personal projects, I mean, how does that uh, affect or influence your, your paid work, your advertising or editorial work? Do you find that it helps, uh, helps you connect with new clients? Does it help you uh, refine your skills? How important is that personal work to you? It's so important. I mean, um, all of the above from what you just said. You know, um, one of the things as a photographer that, and all of us as photographers, no matter how much experience you have, or if you're just getting in the game, it is all about practice, practice, practice. And just putting yourself in that situation and going and seeing like what you like and what you don't like. And, and, and so that was one of the things that forced me to do was set up um, something that I, I gave myself parameters. I didn't just say, you know, I'm just gonna find any dog person on the street and ask them if they want to be part of the project. I gave myself some limitations and um, some boundaries to work with as if it was um, a real project or a real assignment. And it was up to me to make that happen. You know, there wasn't anyone breathing down my neck. I mean, I did give myself deadlines because I didn't just want something to go on forever. So I gave myself a couple of months and said, okay, the, the email promo is going to go out on this date. So I need to have this amount of images finished by then, and it just forced me to, especially not having a, um, a very big budget, really no budget at all, so I couldn't use assistants, I couldn't use stylists, um, so it really made me um, think, uh, have to think on the go, but still be creative at the same time, set up my lights, and again, so it was just about practice, 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 and even working with the dogs, that was something that I really have never done before. As an assistant, we work with um, on a couple of shoots a few years, quite a few years back, where we would use uh, dogs, but they were with uh, a trainer and they would have a model. And, you know, so these dogs knew what they were doing, but the dogs that I photographed were not uh, professional trained, professionally trained dogs. So there was um, a lot of things that would happen spur of the moment that uh, would force me to think in different ways as opposed to possibly, you know, just like having an advertising uh, assignment where there was just uh, a certain layout and you had to look at that layout. Most of the time I would um, start off on the tripod, which I usually always do because of how I like to compose things and, you know, put the shapes in the buildings and stuff in certain places and, yeah, nine times out of ten, um, I would end up off the tripod and, and, and shooting, you know, all over the place, which was fun and, and, it, and it was Actually, a lot of, it was a little difficult editing things, but um, I actually got more out of it. So I think that's what the personal project can do. It just really forces you to train yourself and, and, and practice and, and then find something that you really are, inspires you and what you really you know, are interested in really gives you that much more motivation to do it.
All right, well, let's talk uh, specifically one more thing a lot of people ask about personal projects, and that is how are you finding your subjects? So how did you go about finding the people that are in these photos? Uh, was it something that you did at the dog park, or did you put out an ad? How did you get those people to show up? To find the people that I use for the dog people project, well, a lot of them I did find at the dog park and through friends. Um, I actually used a couple of online uh, model searches. So I didn't want it, like I said before, I didn't just want to find anyone. So um, I did sort of my own casting that way. But, you know, I made up flyers and I went downtown and I put them in coffee shops and I handed them out to people that I saw walking, you know, down the street. So it was basically just more of a hands-on thing. I, I actually didn't put out um, any ads, but it was just from hearsay and word of mouth and sending out emails to friends. Awesome. Well, uh, Scott, tell us where people can find you on the web and on Facebook and Twitter and all those kinds of things. Point us to where people can see your work. Okay, you can find me. Uh, my website is uh, scottwitter.com and you can actually uh, see more about the Dog People Project on my blog, which is scottwitterblog.com. Um, actually, I'm doing uh, constant updates on all of the people that I photographed and have a questionnaire and we'll show their photographs. So like once a week, um, we'll highlight someone and you can go and, and check them out. And so I'm also on Facebook and Twitter and all those links are all over the blog and on my website. Well, thanks Scott so much for being on the show today. Thanks so much for having me. You bet. Again, that's Scott Witter, an awesome guy. He's based in Los Angeles, advertising and editorial photographer. Make sure you check out his work at scottwitter.com. And for more about Scott and to see some of the photos that he's taken, make sure you go look at the Adorama Learning Center, where you'll see not only his work, but the work of other photographers that we've had right here on how they do that. Well, thanks for joining me this week, and I'll see you again next time. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.